Hello, 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 and welcome back. My name is Philip Madness, and today I will be talking about my experience with Anthem. First off, let me say Anthem is more enjoyable than I thought it would be, which makes its abhorrent technical issues, and there is a myriad of them, nothing short of appalling. I had the, uh, well, pleasure, was it, of playing Anthem during its demo weekend. And while I had fun with several parts of the game, I'm far from convinced it is worth the asking price. Anthem excels in making you feel powerful, with a few exceptions, but on those I will stop later. Never has a game felt so much like what an Iron Man game should be, especially with the first javelin we had access to during the demo. Miniature rockets, grenades and an ultimate that's powerful enough to wipe out dozens of mobs all at once cements this power fantasy in a way that is nothing short of captivating. And for that, Bauer has my most sincere congratulations. Good work, guys. That's coupled with the vast amount of customization of the javelins, made me thoroughly enjoy my time as the Storm Javelin in particular whose ability to glide through the air with his majestic cape and aristocratic poise made me immediately seize the opportunity of giving my favorite Master of Magnetism tribute. Of course you made Magneto, you fucking asshole. That's such a good Magneto, though. Check it. How's my Hulkbuster? How's my Hulkbuster? Did I do good, Dad? Holy shit, it even Magnetos. Look, look at the Hulkbusters. Wait, do you use do you use fuel? Are you, are you? Holy sh oh. Some pretty sweet moments were to be had, especially whenever I dropped the storm javelin's ultimate ability. It is a visual spectacle, and again, it plays really well to that core power fantasy this sort of game revolves around. Well, it revolves around that and loot, but on loot a little bit later. Actually, speaking of loot, why not? Some of the guns aren't too impressive at all, in their damage output and their sound as it's both. Or either, bit too silent sometimes, bit too normal in others. Pardon, in some ways. This is a science fantasy world, right? Why not give guns an extra kick? Granted, maybe they do become better at level 30 than at level 10 or 15, but with how little we know about the end game, look of the game, outside of PR and carefully edited and crafted 5 minute videos, who the hell cares? Now for the technical issues. And they were several and they were truly abhorrent. Once, when I alt tabbed, Anton murdered my screen resolution, transporting me back into ye olde middle ages. FPS drops were a common occurrence, and me and my dear friend Mega Short Fuse were disconnected just as we were doing the Stronghold mission. An admittedly fun mission, although why anyone would replay it more than five, ten times, oh, I do not know. There's only so much fun you can get from decimating a big ass bug that doesn't seem equipped to do anything to harm any of the javelins in the air. And hint, that's all of them. There's things literally floating jetpacks in the air. I don't think I got hit a single time. I will say, that boss at least was fun. At least it made us feel powerful. Know what wasn't fun? A big, bully, spongy, anti-air gun boss. I don't remember how it's called, and I don't care about wasting any more time on finding out, ever. But that oh, thing shit, took us cool. way too long to kill, and me and my friend were deploying advanced warfare tactics, son. That whole experience was frustrating and unrewarding. Unlike the stronghold. Focus boss, focus boss, I'm pulling aggro from mooks. As for the story, the less said the better. Yeah. But fine, I will say something anyway. The one quest we actually had access to yes. showed some come in, come in. fun about uh, writing and at least one yes, memorable character, don't, don't come even come if for a gimmicky don't. reason. What about common conversations between supporting characters while we're in the warfare? Uh, I mean javelin? I recall smiling at a single line, but I don't remember the line itself. 
and all the rest, including that line, is just... You know, it's not even filling. It's the same as that nice lady that talks to you occasionally in Warframe. Makes for a nice change of pace from all the bullets flying at your noggin. But it's not like you actually care. Is it? Is it? The sad truth of the matter is... I doubt Anthem's creation has been due to Bauer's sudden and inexplicable desire to break away from the tried and true format of creating rich worlds where choice matters for the benefit of making a Destiny light sh loot shooter. Even so, they've done an admirable job in creating a game as fun as Anthem seems to be in what to me looks like a pretty short development cycle. What has me most worried about Anthem is just how much we don't know about this game days before its release. How much will the cosmetics cost in terms of real money, as opposed to time spent grinding? How extensive is the end game content? To quote Anthem's latest video on the topic, there will be challenges, contracts, free play and strongholds. How does the content drop delivery map look like two months down the road? How about six? Just how many tens of gigabytes will the day one patch be? And how many new bugs will we get for each one fixed? There are plenty to fix, I assure you. I could go on and on asking questions like these. And it's unfortunate that I have to. There was a time when I gave Bioware every benefit of the doubt, but in a world where EA's bottom line forces its developer studios towards ever more rushed out, money grubbing video games, that time is long since past. Anthem is a definite, absolute, wait for many months, if ever, buy for me. Based on my enjoyment of the core, I honestly would like to play it at some point. The core gameplay, that is. Based on how tired I am of EA, I ought not to. Time will tell, and so will the impudence EA shows in their monetizing of cosmetics. I mean, if any one piece of helmet, or armor, or collar, god forbid, costs anything in the range of 10, 15, 20 dollars, they might as well shoot themselves in the foot, where I'm concerned, and where many others are. But at the same time, I still think there's a massive audience for this game which simply won't care, which has shown... Uh, uncaring in the face of the greed of EA. So if I had to do any sort of guess, if I had to make any sort of guess as to how many copies they would sell at launch, I would go no less than 5-6 million. And of course, undoubtedly, would get a headline in PC Gamer the likes of 2-3-4 weeks down the road, Anthem launch underperforms well below EA's expectations. This shit didn't work on anything else. That's what happened with Battlefield 5's 7.3 million copies, right? It's crazy how ridiculously greedy EA is. But I'm not going to go on about this. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. Especially if you like, I don't know, ringing bells. I don't know why people keep talking about the bell. Well, I do. It's notifications, getting emails, all that blah blah. But I'll see you next time. Bye! Big gun number one. Jesus fucking Christ, this gun's nuts. Hit it with everything. This is like our defense force. Even the way it dies is unnerving. Uh, well, that was awesome. I'm gonna go with eight. One for each of the tyrant's legs. Ah, uh, no more stalking talk, please.